the following is a tempting uh, sort of perspective, I think. You might think, well, content, uh, information, um, is taught, uh, but virtues, character traits, and the like, those, those, are, uh, those are caught more than they're mm -hmm. taught. And so you might think that, that um, education toward intellectual virtue isn't going to be so much about the curriculum as it is about the um, getting teachers in front of students who exhibit these uh, these traits. Is that the right way to think about it? Does, if you're trying to educate for uh, virtue, for intellectual virtue, does curriculum stay just as it is, whereas you're just more careful about the kinds of teachers you put in front of students? How should we think about that? Can I add a category? Mm -hmm. I think also that, the, so, so not only is there, there's the factor of the curriculum, what's being taught, and the factor of the teacher, but there's also the factor of the, the kind of activities that are assigned. So the kinds of things that the students are asked to, to habituate themselves into. Mm -hmm. um, I, I actually think that uh, that would be the first category I would press into in terms of what, what uh, educating for intellectual virtue is going to look like. So are students in a situation where they're getting rewarded for one-upping each other? Or are they in a situation where they're getting rewarded for working together cooperatively to try to come to a solution? That's the kind of habituation that, that seems to me like a good place to start. Yeah. I think the curriculum is very important, as well as the character of the teacher. Um, and um, one of the things about uh, classical schools, for example, is that they, the curriculum is made of great texts. And these texts are great by virtue of um, the depth of insight and the uh, moral quality and the, um, and the artistic quality, uh, the artistic excellence of the texts. And uh, so if we're teaching students, if we're trying to form students' minds in such a way that they become excellent <laughs> as human minds, mm -hmm. Um, we do want to, uh, for, for them to be feeding on excellent material. Yeah. Uh, so a, a course could be, could be taught by a very, very able and, and inspiring teacher, and yet if, it, if the texts weren't very good, it would be lacking in something, yeah. or something important. And, and just to push my point a little bit more obnoxiously, I, so, so I teach in that kind of a classical setting, and uh, part, of, part of the reason why teaching in great texts is so wonderful is because it forms habits of intellectual virtue because the texts are difficult and beautiful. Mm -hmm. You actually, so, so just, just being exposed to those kinds of texts consistently forces a kind of intellectual rigor and also develops a kind of uh, uh, aesthetic appreciation mm -hmm. for the greatness of these books. Yes, I think we definitely want to keep the aesthetic dimension uh, in, in the picture mm -hmm. um, and not separate it from the moral and the intellectual, not right, try to divide right. things up too much. Right. Yeah. Right. I think one, one point that's consistent with what both of you have said <coughs> is that educating for, for growth and in intellectual virtues isn't primarily a matter of teaching or talking about mm -hmm. those traits, right? Um, uh, so it's not a sort of separate curriculum that gets pursued in addition to the academic curriculum. It's much more a matter of how you approach the academic curriculum and then, yes, what the substance of that curriculum is as well. And that suggests that there are at least, well, that there are multiple, there are multiple um, kind of variables that are worth thinking about here if, if that's our goal. One is certainly who the teacher is and the, the, whether they model the, the passion for ideas and the love of the subject matter and mm -hmm. so forth. And that's often what kind of transmits, you know, growth and, and inspiration in these qualities. But, but uh, like Janelle was saying, there are values that are implicit in any classroom, what, what yeah. gets rewarded yeah. and, and what, what, gets, what doesn't get rewarded. Mm -hmm. so, so thinking about um, setting up kind of the values of a classroom in a way that, that will lead to uh, students asking questions and focusing on important details and working yeah. together and considering alternative perspectives. Um, which, is, which I think illustrates a broader point about kind of the culture of a classroom, right? Mm -hmm. So ideally what we would have is a, is a, is a teacher that's knowledgeable and passionate, mm -hmm. a curriculum that lends itself to, 
to deep thinking and, and learning about important ideas. Um, and then a culture that supports that as well in terms of what's the language that's used, what are the values that are used, or the, the values that are, that are upheld. Um, and then similarly, of course, there are, there are practices, pedagogical practices yeah. as well. And you might be a very passionate teacher, but if you don't have certain s pedagogical skills, for instance, if you don't give your students and know how to give them opportunities, as you were suggesting, to yeah. think well, to yeah. practice these virtues of the mind, yeah. right? Then if you're not creating those opportunities, they don't always yeah. happen, right? right, right. Uh, just lecturing, that doesn't, that doesn't always right. make for, for, um, for opportunities to think in class. So being able to, to, to structure activities, be it inside the classroom or outside, mm -hmm. um, that give students opportunities to practice the virtues. Yeah. seems important as well. So it seems like a lot of different things yeah. need to be pursued. If I can highlight one thing yeah. you said, maybe this is a good distinction. So, so intellectual virtues aren't ideas, they're habits of mind, yeah. right? So, so you can't, I mean, you could, you could teach about intellectual virtues, but no amount of teaching right. content about intellectual right. virtues is right. giving your, that's not how you're going to transmit an intellectual that's virtue. Right. You have to cultivate a habit within a student. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, then, and then that 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 allows, if you're thinking about this philosophically, it allows us to draw on a whole rich tradition of yeah. asking about how virtuous habits are formed. Yeah. Role models, exemplars are part mm -hmm. of it, um, but communities and practices uh, are a big part of it as well. 